People who've survived a murder attempt by dumb luck. What's your story? I was 14 and outside of my garage petting my cat. It was November, so it was already dark by 5 p.m. Someone opened the door behind me without me hearing, grabbed me by my ponytail, and started dragging me outside. They hit me on my head with a brick and knocked me out. Pulled me halfway around my house when, I'm just guessing this is when, they stabbed me in the left side of my stomach. This must have brought me out of my days because my mom said she heard me scream from inside where she and my brother and sister were in the kitchen. They came out the front door and saw me bleeding out on the sidewalk and called 911. Had 12 stitches, double layer, a severe concussion, and whiplash. Didn't eat and hardly slept for a week. They never found them. This is a horrifying one to start out with, because a lot of murder attempts or whatever seem targeted. This seems pretty random. And something about random murder attempts are just way scarier to me. The idea that they can happen at any time to anyone, ugh. Story 2. My sister had this one friend when we were growing up that I always got a bad vibe from. She would try to pick on my little brother, but I would always stop her. I was 8, she was 10. Once we were at a lake and all the kids were swimming. I swam out to the deep, roped-off part, but I was still little and really shouldn't have. She kept acting weird and getting closer to me making this weird laugh. She pushed me off the wooden pole into the water and I got scared and started to swim back. But she came up behind me and pushed me under. It didn't click at first that she was trying to drown me. But after she aggressively pushed me under the third time, I had this crazy moment of clarity. It was like the world slowed down ever so briefly. I relaxed, let myself sink, swam underneath her and came up behind her. I grabbed her hair and shoved her face into the water, keeping my legs on her back so her body couldn't rise. I waited until her struggling slowed down and let her come up. I waited in the water saying nothing, bracing myself for her retaliation. But she just looked panicked and swam back to shore. I told my sister who had already expressed that the girl was weird. We confronted her together and she just looked really dazed. In a monotone voice, she said, I'm sorry I didn't know it would be like that. It wasn't until I replayed those words in my mind later that I realized that what she was really saying was, Sorry I tried to drown you. It wasn't until I almost drowned myself that I realized how horrible it is to do to someone. That's a very empathetic interpretation of her words. I was kind of thinking it's full on like kid sociopath. But if that is truly what she meant, then it can't be sociopath because then there's empathy. So I'll hope for that one. Story 3. Three men drugged me and kidnapped me. I woke up on a floor with one of them tearing my clothes off and my moon boat. Broken foot. I tried kicking him off with the boot, but he started knocking my head into the floor and I passed out. I woke up in daylight in a garbage bin, naked and in a pool of my own blood. I don't know how I got there or how I found the nearest policeman, but I then collapsed again. Woke up in a hospital with 52 stitches in my head and 78 in my sensitive areas. Doctor said it was the worst assault trauma she ever saw. They say it's a miracle I'm alive and don't know how I did it. They were never caught. I'm a crisis trauma and PTSD counselor now. They didn't win. Story 4. I was exiting a bar once after last call and was with a friend who was a medic. We saw a girl laying in a snowbank near a telephone pole who had been just hit by a car. We ran over and tried to help her. Some others were already on the phone with 911, and I, not having any medical training, didn't have anything to contribute but didn't want to just leave. The whole situation was concerning. I turn around for a second and start to hear people screaming. I turn around and a minivan was heading straight for us. The other people around this woman already started to run, but I was too late. He hit me as I was trying to flee, put the car in reverse, ran me over again, and then went forward and ran me over a third time. Turns out the guy was high and drunk and got into a fight with the woman's boyfriend, whom I bared a strong resemblance to, I guess. He thought I was him. Not to throw a pity party for myself, but nine years later, I have a ton of medical issues. And my life pretty much started on a downward spiral since. But sure, I guess I survived. Story 5. My husband and I live above our place of business. Our alarm company called us at 3am to say there was a motion detection alert, just one, in a weird place. We assumed it was a mouse but went to reset slash check it out. Husband ended up face to face with a burglar who was on his way out the window he had broken. He ran back inside, I called 911, and we heard mad chaos going on in the depths of the building. So much crashing and smashing. Burglar monkey climbed a 10 foot iron gate, bodily smashed through two sets of commercial grade glass doors and was outside again. My husband was like, yeah, screw this dude. Tore after him and tackled him. He got him on the ground and pinned him. 
Bear this in mind the whole time I'm narrating to 911, and I'm chasing around in a panties and tank top. I was a bit behind my husband. I'm in the middle of the street about 15 feet away when a minivan squealed around the corner. It was his girlfriend slash getaway driver. I luckily missed it. I was super focused on reading the license plate, which was one of those cutesy font out of state ones, and therefore hard to read. But she yelled, get the frick off him or I'm running your girl over. Then she tried to. The audio and video I had to watch for the trial was horrifying. I had blocked it out nearly completely and really didn't realize how close it was. She guns the engine at me. I throw my hands up in front of my face when I realize what she's doing and scream and jump out of the way with inches to spare. He jumped in and off they went. He bled all over my husband, yikes, and eventually the DNA and partial plate info nailed them. They're both in prison. Addendum, trials, suck. This seems like a very good example of why not to run after someone who is robbing from you for any reason. Belongings can be replaced, your life cannot. I know it may feel like what you want to do in the moment, but I don't think it's ever a good idea. Sure, you might get your stuff back like 50% of the time, maybe even more. But the times it goes wrong, is they're just too bad. It's not worth it. Story 6. I was riding in a train across Eastern Europe. I was running low on money, and even though I had been warned that a woman should not travel alone in second-class seating, I did not spring for first class. I was sitting alone in one of the compartments that seats six. This was also a mistake, and a very stupid one to sit alone. Eventually, the train stopped and a man got on. He was very drunk. He came into my compartment and I guess thought I looked like his ex-wife. He attacked me. If it weren't for the fact that this particular station was the border between two countries, I would be dead. Instead, border patrol from both countries were on the train and while I was unable to scream, the door was open. And at least a half a dozen uniformed men jumped him and saved me. I was in the hospital for a little while but recovered. At one point during trial, one of the cops asked me if I wanted him and his buddies to hold the guy down while I hit him. I thought he was joking, so I said, no, go ahead, you do it. I was also joking, but it turns out they took it seriously and were about to. I did put a stop to that at least, but they were so offended that someone from their country would attack a young female American tourist. They were furious with him. So many people there depended upon tourism. Sounds like uh, Border Patrol really went above and beyond here. Or at least the cops did. Still beating up a random guy, I'm glad OP put a stop to it because it doesn't really solve anything at all. Honestly, it's surprisingly altruistic to think of in the moment after just being assaulted by this man. So like, huge props for OP for keeping a cool head. Story 7. My supposed best friend decided that my wife and I were too perfect, therefore it must be an act and I was obviously abusing her. He was at our house after I made an awesome dinner and we were having fun drinking and singing karaoke. I went to the kitchen to put some glasses away, came back and leaned on the couch with him slightly behind me and to the left. Then I heard a thunk and felt an amazing amount of pain on the top of my head. He had picked up the whiskey bottle on the table and smashed it into my skull. I was very confused as to what the hell was happening. Then, the blood started pouring. I didn't want to get blood everywhere so I went to the kitchen. Dude is pacing back and forth saying weird stuff. I thought about my gun which was close by, but I wasn't thinking quite straight. He left. I had a huge concussion and still suffer side effects from it. My number two goal in life is to live longer than that guy just so I can crap on his grave. Story 8. Throw away because it got some media. I'm a criminal defense attorney. I was representing this guy that had embezzled almost 500000 from his business partner. He was looking down the barrel at several years in prison, a bunch of his assets had been seized by the government, was being sued by multiple creditors for north of $2 million, and was in the midst of an ugly divorce and wasn't allowed to see his kids. I was one of three lawyers he had. Criminal, civil, and divorce. He was drinking a lot and using drugs. I used to get these incoherent phone calls in the middle of the night that ranged from threats to crying. He came to my office one day and asked for me, but I was in court. My secretary said he was perfectly civil. He then went to his divorce lawyer's office and shot him to death. Got stopped by the police a short distance away and was wounded in a shootout. He would later tell the cops that he had come to my office to shoot me that day and also planned to shoot his civil attorney. This seems the most dumb luck one so far. If OP were just in the wrong place at the wrong time, this guy had something out for him and OP would have been gone. Instead, he was in court just by chance and lived. That's crazy. Story 9. I, 18F back then, now 25, was on my way home at night after meeting a friend. My home was just 10 minutes away from the train station. After a few minutes, I felt someone following me. No big deal, I thought, just someone else walking home. But I started walking faster. I realized the person behind me was catching up. Weird. In my head, I started to make up scenarios of how to defend myself if the person would attack me. Never would I think of this to actually happen. Well, until I felt something hitting me on the back of my head hard. I went 
furious. I turned around and attacked the guy. My mind was just full of anger towards the stranger who, what I thought, hit me. We were wrestling until I fell on the ground. He was sitting on top of me, strangling me. I tried to crawl my nails into his eyes as deep as I could, but I started to black out. Suddenly, there was this thought in my head, wake up or you will die. Well, adrenaline kicked in again and I opened my eyes and screamed at the top of my lungs, attacking him again. That helped. He stood up and began to run. I laid there for a few seconds and then I started to run home, still screaming. My mom was already at our door and opened it for me, because my screams woke her up, or her mother senses, who knows. She immediately called the cops and they could arrest him on the same night. It turns out, he actually shot me from behind. They assume that the gun didn't work properly, the bullet didn't penetrate my skull and stuck in there. But as far as I know, they never found out why the gun misfired. I'm glad though. He told the cops that he already followed me a few times in the past, but never had the guts to do it. He wanted to kill me and take advantage of my dead body. I know that's a wild story. I have some Swiss newspaper articles as a source if someone cares though. That whole time I'm like, OP, that is a crazy story, but hey, it sounds like you fended him off yourself. Doesn't sound like luck to me. Then she was like, oh yeah, I got shot by the way. I'm like, hey, excuse me? Yeah, that's some dumb luck. That's some real dumb luck. Story 10. I had a guy high on a couple of drugs break into my apartment in college. Somehow he was convinced he had lost his glasses inside. I'm doing dishes when my door gets slammed open. Next thing I know, he's behind me, and I'm being choked to death in my kitchen. As I was losing consciousness, I grabbed my roommate's acrylic bong and frantically swung over my shoulder into his face. The bong broke, but did nothing, as the guy was choking me even harder. So I swung it again. Because the bong broke the first time, I was hitting the guy with a 6-inch claw of acrylic glass. Afterward, his scalp and part of his cheek were hanging off the side of his face. Essentially, I scalped him with a bong. So I chased the guy out of my house. There is easily two feet of snow outside. He tries walking back to his house through a cemetery as a shortcut, and he passes out in the cemetery. The police only found him because I called the cops and they followed the blood and footprints through the snow. And that's the part I was surprised about the most. I hit the guy on his scalp. There isn't much blood in a scalp compared to most of the body, but my kitchen was covered in blood. His blood was on my refrigerator, counter, floor, and ceiling. It was almost as traumatic to clean it. My roommates were gone for winter break. Thank god my roommate's girlfriend came over and helped me. Now as for the guy, the cops couldn't charge him for two days because he needed blood transfusions. He was charged with assault, breaking and entering, and attempted murder. And he definitely had possession of drugs on him too. Not sure what he got convicted of, but he went to jail for four years. Now, I'm not a huge fan of prison in general, or at least private prisons that are more for punishment and collecting money than reformation, but even then, four years is... That's pretty light. That's like, a uh, concerningly light, if I had to say. I would be very afraid of that person coming out of jail after those four years and trying to hunt me down. Story 11. If you're from the area I'm from, this will probably sound familiar. But I got absolutely blackout drunk at an end of the year slash graduation party, and ended up having to get taken home early. Later that night, another student at the party ended up stabbing and unaliving five people. Turns out he had mental issues, schizophrenia, and thought everyone at the party was a werewolf or vampire who threatened his life. He never went to jail, and ended up being found non-criminally responsible instead. Story 12. Mine's not extreme by any stretch, but a couple of years ago, my brother and I went to walk the dog at like 11pm. We left through the side gate, live on a corner. And right as we exit, I see this weird dude looking at the corner of the footpath walking weirdly towards us. Got bad vibes and told my brother to get the dog and get back inside. This dude is walking kind of side on and hiding something in his hand behind his back. As I'm getting my brother through the gate, the dude says something like, Oi mate, can I come in? I need a blanket, I'm freezing. I just ignored him and went inside and locked the door. We then get a call from the people who live two doors up. The same dude knocked on their door and their 10 year old son opened it to see a dude holding a frickin' hatchet. Anyway, I'm glad I went with my gut on that one. Story 13. I was around 20 to 21 years old and walking home at about 3am after a night out, and I was absolutely plastered. I was about 200 meters from my house when a hooded figure jumped out from behind a bush and immediately had a knife pushing into my stomach as he grabbed my neck and tried pulling me in. Fortunately, I was stronger and pulled away. He went to lunge at me with the knife when suddenly he stopped. He stared for what felt like an eternity, but was probably only a second or two, and then said, Holy crap, my name. I haven't seen you in so long. My bad, mate. And then walked off like nothing had happened. I still don't know who he was to this day. Story 14. Chilling with the bros drinking at a park. As we drive off to leave, a car coming our way almost hits us. Driver obviously reacts like WTF and I guess the other car noticed. They turned around and caught up to us at a stop sign. Other driver asked if we had a problem. We told him to stop driving like jerks. 
Then their back window rolls down and two guys in the back draw glocks with the drum magazines. We just kinda froze up at first, but then our driver pulled off hastily. Later found out those guys got arrested for shooting someone else the same day. Story 15. In my late teens, I used to buy drugs from random dudes in the projects, low-income housing. One day, we gave some money to a guy named Forty. He took it and went inside one of the buildings. We waited in the car for several minutes. We started to think he had taken our money and left. Right about that time, a car full of drugged-up white dudes pulled up beside ours. Apparently, my friend owed them money. They pointed a gun at him and said that if he had enough money to buy drugs, then he could pay them back. I really thought they were going to shoot us and just drive off like it was nothing. And I hadn't even done anything wrong. I thought I was going to pee my pants. Right about that time, Forty came back out with our weed and an even bigger gun. He scared them away and then we went back to his apartment and smoked a blunt. What a good man. Turns out he was only selling weed because he had a six-year-old daughter, and that was the only way he knew how to give her a better life than the one he had. I babysat his daughter occasionally for the rest of the summer. I really hoped that she got a decent childhood and that her dad stayed safe and out of jail. Story 16. When I was two weeks into my first job as a 16-year-old, at a smoothie establishment that should be known to NBA fans, we were robbed. It was late and my coworker's friends had been playing pranks on her all day, so when I saw someone burst through the door, I thought it was just that. Until, that is, I had something metal pressed against my back and an arm wrapped around my chest. The robber gave the whole stereotypical gimme all your money spiel and ordered us to go into the back room, kneel down, and face the wall. As I was kneeling and hearing him walk towards us, time seemed to slow down. Thankfully, I'd been refilling juices whenever he came in, and so the door to the back room was partially blocked by a heavy cart. With whatever substance he was on, he wasn't coordinated enough to get past it to us, and so he fled. He was followed by my coworker's husband and caught. When he was caught, they found an industrial-sized pipe wrench wrapped tightly in his fist, so that he could get a stronger grip when swinging. I'm so glad that cart was there. Once a year or so, I would look him up in the parish prison roster to see if he was still there. One year, he suddenly wasn't. I later found him named in a lawsuit as having stabbed his cellmate a half dozen times while the guy was asleep. Definitely doesn't seem like the nicest of people. Nine years later, I'm still unpacking this incident in therapy. It's why I don't like walking around cities at night or sitting where I can't see the door. Story 17. I was a lead man at a factory. A girl starts working there and I take an interest. After a few months, I find out she is in a terrible, drug-fueled, abusive relationship. Every night, I tell her to call me, I'll come get her. Finally, after months, she calls me. I come get her and take her to my house. The guy she was in the relationship with didn't take too kindly to me taking her away. He spends the next two years harassing and threatening us. A few months after she and I got married, we went out for a few drinks. Her ex just happened to be at the bar we went to. He apologized to us for the threats and harassment. We were sitting outside talking with a few other people. Next thing I know, I'm on my back on the ground with someone choking me. I try all I can to get them off me, but I'm being blindsided and them being on top of me, it wasn't easy. As I struggle to get free, everything goes black. Then I see the light at the end of the tunnel. In that moment, I was certain that this was the end for me. I somehow manage to get a better hold of this person's head and I yank them off of me. We run to the car and get away. A week later or so, my wife had been talking to everyone she thinks might know what happened. Turns out her ex had paid two people $50 to unalive me that night. $50? That's all he thought you were worth? $50? OP, that level of disrespect, oh my. First of all, I'm sorry you almost got unalived. Sure, th like that's bad, but $50? If someone says assassins or hitmen after me, please pay more than $50. That's all I ask. Just show some respect.